Greetings, brethren. It was Philip P. Bliss in the song entitled Hold the Fort. He said, Ho, oh, my Conrads, see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcement now appearing, victory is nigh. Hold the fort for I am coming. Jesus signal still. Wave the answer back to heaven. By thy grace, we will. Last morning, I shared with you on this matter of discouragement. And we were looking at what was the reason for Elijah's discouragement. Sometimes the reasons are different. We may ask ourselves the question, why am I discouraged? What got me discouraged? What got me to where I am? And when we find the reason, we can help ourselves in the future not to be. But not only that we can see the reason, but we can also see the results of discouragement. If you go to chapter 19 of 1 Kings and we read verse 3 and verse number 4. A matter of fact, let me read for you from verse 1 to 4. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Of course, by now you would understand that the battle between the Almighty God and Ahab, God, Ahab and his folks lost that. And just like they had slain the prophets of the Lord before Elijah have now slain their prophets. And Ahab the king goes home and he tells his wife what was done. And with all how he had slain all the prophets with the Lord, the he here is Elijah. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also if I may not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And watch verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey in the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and say, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. The man became so discouraged because of what someone said. He wants to die. This great man of God gave up, and in verse 3, he ran. And that's exactly what the devil wanted. The devil wanted to get him so afraid, so discouraged, that he would not continue to do what God would have him to do. The devil stopped him. Elijah became so depressed. What are the results of discouragement? He became so depressed. He just don't want to be around people anymore. Look at verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, where belonged unto Judah, and left his servant there. Not even his servant. He wanted to be around. He wanted to get away from it all. So depressed. Notice verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die and say, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. In other words, the prophets and my fathers before are dead. They serve you. God, I'm not going through this anymore. Just take my life, kill me, and let it be over. So depressed that he don't want to go on. He now sees everything as hopeless. I tell you, this tool of discouragement is so powerful that most of the time, this is the tool Satan uses with God's children if he can't catch them with any other tool. Watch out for it. Every servant of God must be careful, especially if you're doing something for him. There are many servants of God in the past became so discouraged 
and depressed, ask God to take away their lives. You will be surprised that if you go to Numbers chapter 11, verse 10 to 15, you will find there a man by the name of Moses who became so discouraged. God's leader requests to die. You will be surprised. The one that we speak about, the man with faith. Oftentimes we say you need to have the faith of Job. But if you go to chapter 6, verse 8 and verse number 9, you will find him, one wanting God to take away his life. You will be surprised that the man Jeremiah, that great prophet of the Lord, God ordained to be prophet before he was even born. But in chapter 20, verse number 14 to verse number 18, you would find him asking God to take away his life. And I'm sure that you know of the man Jonah, who at first heard the voice of God and refused to do what God wanted him to do. And then afterwards, went and did what God asked him to do. And there was a great revival in Nineveh. But you'll be surprised to know that in chapter 4, verse 3, and verse number 8, he too was numbered among those who wished to die. Here we find servants of God during their service became disappointed, depressed, defeated by discouragement and was wanting to die. Elijah is not excluded. For in chapter 19 of 1 Kings and verse number 4, he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father. In other words, this man of God said, Enough is enough. He said, I had enough. One of the things we must always remember, if we become discouraged and give up, what suffers, the plan of the enemy or the plan of God? I am sure that if you would allow yourself to be discouraged long enough, that you will find yourself depressed. And Satan loves nothing more than to have the children of God depressed. One of the things that we should do, all of us, we should always do, is to try our best to encourage and not to discourage. Because discouragement is that tool that at times you find it hard to get a discouraged person out of that state. Satan loves to use the tool of discouragement. It comes in so many different forms. And each and every one of us need to stop and say, Lord, for the times that I have discouraged someone, would you please forgive me? and determine in our lives that we will do our best to be an encourager and not a discourager. May God help us all this day that we become encouragers. And if you are discouraged, oh, stop looking down, stop looking around, listen up and look up because this is not a place where God wants you to be. In our next devotion, we'll look at the remedy for discouragement. Father, thank you that even when we are discouraged, it's not the end. God, your servant here running away, but we are going to see, God, will you walk with him and on him to be encouraged. Speak to us as we continue to live for you. Forgive us of the times where we discourage others and help us to be those to encourage and not discourage because we love you. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Let's set out to be an encourager. That person that you see who is discouraged, encourage that person in the name of the Lord. Do have a great day. I encourage you to share this devotion with a friend or a loved one.